Welcome to Nuff Said, where we cover all comic books coming out so you can have your pool list ready for your local comic book stores. We'll take a look at everything from Marvel, DC, and independent comics and try to focus on the good more so than the bad. That's not to say that I won't call out or criticize something that I see as uninspiring or unoriginal. I'm just stating for comic book industry to stay afloat, we have to put more focus into highlighting the good to generate interest as we do into tearing it down which lowers the interest. With that being said, make sure to support your local comic book shops and independent comic book creators. Shout out to the League of Comic Book Geeks.com for providing the source of reference. Make sure to sign up to free of uh make sure to sign up for free for the League of uh Geeks. Uh, that way you can have your pool list ready. Uh, when you go into your comic book stores, you could get those special covers and everything without having to scrounge around and look for them. Um, so with that being said, let's get into the comic books. And you know what? Since this is the first episode, I, I do want to cover uh, the previous week of comic books that are coming out. Even though these ones are going to be a little bit late to order, you can still uh, keep an eye out for these comic books that will be coming out uh, very soon. So this first episode is for the previous week of June 10th of 2024. Let's go ahead and put the comic books coming out out on the screen, as you can see right here. These are the new books that are coming out last week. So uh, let's go ahead and start with Action Comics 1061. I'm liking this cover already. Uh, got Bizarro in the background. Dope, dope art for the cover. One thing I don't like about uh, comic books, and I, I did say I was trying to be positive more so, but uh, the cover is never an indicator of the artwork inside the book because a lot of times you'll have a different artist on the cover than you have on the inside. And most of the time that cover art is going to be better than the artwork inside the book. So you kind of get like uh, a false sense of what you're going to get once you open the book and you're like, oh, hold up. Who's this? This isn't the same dude who drew this amazing cover. You know, you want this art and then you see a different art. So I'm not certain if uh it's the same artist without, but looking at this, it says Superman Superstars Begins. Jason Aaron writes Superman for the first time, and he is joined by fan favorite artist John Timms, the Wizard Bizarro. All right, so uh, the description reads as such, Jason Aaron writes Superman for the very first time, teaming up with all-star artists John Timms to present a startling new vision of the Man of Steel's strangest foe. When Superman's doppelganger discovers a dark secret about himself, it unleashes the most dangerous version of Bizarro the world has ever seen. And uh, you know what? I would actually have to say I'm a little bit interested. I ain't going to hold you. I'll say uh, I'll add it to the pool list. doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad at all. Um, moving along, next book, we got the Ultimate Spider-Man number one. And that actually came out on January 10th, so make sure to look for this one. I'm definitely going to pick this one up. Uh, issue number one, you guys know I'm a big Spider-Man guy, one of my favorites. Uh, the artwork off rip, decent cover. Oh, snap. I see they got a gang of variant covers for this one, man. So uh, first, let's go ahead and look at the description. What does it say? The new ultimate Spider-Man for a new ultimate universe. Revolutionary writer Jonathan Hickman and acclaimed artist Marco Chichetto. My apologies if I mispronounced that. Uh, who worked on Daredevil, bring you a bold new take on Spider-Man with the debut title of the new line of Ultimate Comics. After the events of the Ultimate Invasion, the world needs a hero. Who will rise up to take up that responsibility? Prepare for the entangled in a web of mystery and excitement as the all-new Ultimate Spider-Man comic redefines the wall crawler for the 21st century. This is a pretty cool uh, first cover right there. And for the second, I have to hit back a thousand times. I'm just going to look from over here. Here are the variant covers. You know, a few of these do deserve to get a little bit of a zoom in on. That's not too bad right there. I do like that. I actually like that more than the uh, 
I like that slightly more than the original cover. Let's see here. This one doesn't look too bad. You know, let's see, there's some pretty nice covers, actually. That's a nice cover, too. Spider-Man rocking the beard now, MJ. Uh, this looks like J. Scott Campbell did it, so I'm going to, yep. That's nice as well. Make MJ sexy again. This is MJ right there. That is Mary Jane right there. Mary Jane Watson. Uh, let's see here. This cover go hard, too. I ain't going to hold you. That cover go hard. That is a fire-ass cover, bro. I ain't going to hold you. That would probably be the cover I'd cop. Yeah, that, that that's the that's the pool right there. Pull that version right there. Yeah, because that's sick. Well, it's too late for, for this one, so. But that's what I would pull. Me personally. So, man, the comic books for this week, man. Two for two so far. Let's see here. Wolverine issue 41. You can see Wolverine in the background. That's my favorite superhero of all time. <laughs> Just came out on... Four days ago, issue 41, Sabretooth War, part one. Let's read this description. I'm going to already pull this because Wolverine's my favorite. I got so many Wolverine comic books. I actually just got two in the mail the other day uh, to add to the collection. So let me go ahead and show you guys real quick. Go off screen real quick. Just, just picked up issue two and issue three to add to the collection. And I mean, I got long boxes in storage and a few, but I keep like my very personal favorites on me. I keep them in little folders. So, you know, got my Wolverine issue one. This is the Wolverine folder right here, you know. Got that Frank Miller miniseries issue one, then the Mark Silvestri, the whole little Weapon X, you know. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hype. I got way more, but I'm, I'm just gonna keep it at that for now, because uh, we are reviewing comic books after all. So back to the Wolverine discussion. Sabretooth War begins here. The most violent Wolverine story ever told. All right, you already have my my money. I saw Wolverine and Sabretooth on the cover. You already have my money. Now you tell me it's gonna be the most violent Wolverine story ever told. Like, damn it, take my money. All right. Get ready for the showdown to end all showdowns. Wolverine versus Sabretooth. It's been years since these heavy hitters have crossed paths in the Marvel Universe. But as Krakoa falls, so rises Sabretooth. And he's out for revenge. They threw Victor Creed in the pit. But he's free and wielding an army of Sabretooths that will provide... That will prove once and for all why he is Logan's ultimate nemesis. Co-written by literary powerhouses Benjamin Percy who's worked on Wolverine and Ghost Rider and Victor Laval, who's worked on the channeling and Sabretooth and drawn by artistic dynamos, Corey Smith, who's worked on Conan the Barbarian and Ghost Rider and Geoff Shaw, who's worked on Weapons of Vengeance and Wolverine Patch. Don't miss the inaugural issue of this multi-shipping saga leading up to the landmark issue number 50. Dog, this is a hundred. This is my number one cop for this week. I don't care what else else is up on here this would be the first thing if i went to a comic book store and only had ten dollars enough to buy two books this would be one of the two books uh they have a few variant covers incentive covers so I'm not quite certain oh and then they got the retailer exclusives so the retailer exclusives got some dope ones i yo all of these are fucking dope i ain't gonna hold you bro uh well not that's every tooth one i don't know this one, this one's all right too. I don't know about that one. I apologize. Let me go back. Let me go back. The one I'm most keen on, the one I would probably get if I if I was only to cop one, and I'm not a person who buys multiple just for the cover. So if I'm only to get one, it's probably going to be this one. Greg Capullo, man, this reminds me of uh, that X Force issue he did way back in the day when the X Men took on uh, X Force, those X Men and X Factor against X Force and the Executioner song. There was a scene where Wolverine was like up in the little swamp and shit. That's a throwback to me of what this reminds me of, bro. That cover is money right there, bro. 
Uh, you know, this might be one of the only times I would get multiple copies of the same book for the cover because that one's tough. I was just trying to see what this looks like. Uh, that's cool. It would have been cool if they would have swapped out Iron Fist with a Wolverine, like a, you know, type thing. Let me see here. That's fire, too. I ain't gonna hold you. That's fire. <laughs> that is fire. But uh, let's still go with the Greg Capullo one. The Greg Capullo one's heavy fire. And the second one I would get would be this one right here, because I saw that there's like a, a second one that connects to it. So off rip, I, I'd have to get two copies of this book. One for the for the 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 uh, the, 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 the two book spread. And then the other one, just because Greg Capullo's art is just like next level. Um, so man, the Wolverine, yo, know, that three good comic books at the comic book shop, man. I need to get to a comic book shop ASAP. Uh, for those of you who don't know, since I got my Twitch, uh, every time I collect a check from off Twitch, I buy new comic books. That's that's how I, that's how I, you know, uh, try to be responsible. I take the money from playing video games that I get, and then I'll. I'll buy a few comic books with and you know, maybe some food or something with the rest. But uh, but now I see I got some new comic books I, to, I need to catch up on because I've been a little bit out of the loop of the new comic books for, for a minute. I've been going back, buying a lot of the old comic books that I used to have that I no longer have. Because um, there came a point like in like the seventh grade, eighth grade, where I had to start over because all my books basically got trashed um let's see here moving along we got miles morales spider-man issue number 15 gang wars let's read the description it states miss marvel charges into gang war oh i didn't even see her right there cover is pretty tight too i ain't gonna hold you i like that artwork um Miss Marvel charges into gang war. Miles Morales is losing his battle to save Brooklyn. Can Miss Marvel turn the tide? Hobgoblin is out for revenge against Spider-Man, but he's not the only classic Spidey villain who wants a piece of Miles. We gotta we really need to give Miles his own superhero name. Honestly. Like just call him the same thing as the other Spider-Man when there is a Spider-Man. Like, man, there's so many different ways he's spider. Spider York, New York Spider, you know what I'm saying? Something. Red Spider or something. Um, and his own gallery. That like my main problem with them, aside from the super unoriginal of just doing a race swap, they did a little more than certain people with them, but I mean they could just do a little bit more, is all I'm saying. A little bit more originality. Like give him his own rogues gallery, his own name, his own identity, you know. Um with that said, the artwork looks pretty dope. They got a variant cover, and I'm not certain why they got Wolverine on a variant cover for Miles Morales. <laughs> oh, it's 50 Years of Wolverine. That cover go hard, too. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. Like, that, that cover hard as shit. Um... I don't know, man. I'm such a Wolverine mark. I might copy. I would. I would probably copy it for the cover, honestly. Um, that's one of these ones I'm on the fence for. I'm gonna put it on the want it because it's the. I don't know if uh, I'd have to. It'd be one of those books at the comic book store. If you see it on the shelf, you look through a couple pages, see how the artwork is. Like for me personally, I'm more of an artist than a writer. I'm. I'm I do both, you know. But uh, I started off an artist. Been an artist all my life and whatnot. Uh, just from being a fan since 91, coming in with the Jim Lee and the Todd McFarlane, Rob Layfield, Sam Keith, and, uh, you know, Eric Larson, Greg Capullo, Mark Silvestri, and so on and so forth. Even Rob Layfield, I was a huge Rob Layfield, Mark. Uh, just, and, and then the list goes on from there for, like, everybody who's came on since, Ryan Benjamin, uh Ethan Van Skyver, man, freaking Fred Perry. Um, there's just Joe Maradia, Joseph Scott Campbell, Humberto Ramos, John Ramota, uh, senior and junior, man. There's just so many great artists, you know? So, uh, so I'm just a huge fan. But for me personally, when I would go to the, 
because you didn't have time to read every book in the store. So you pretty much go up in there, see what catches your eye, look at a couple pages or whatnot, and then make your decision. This would be one of those books I'd have to make my decision there in the store on based off of what I see when I take a couple preview pages look, you know? And uh, so moving on, I'm three and one maybe so far. Next up, we got Transformers issue number four. I've heard a lot of good things about Transformers, the comic book. A lot of people have been hype about this. Um, even as an 80s baby, to keep it 100 with you, I, I was never the hugest Transformer fan. Like, I thought they was cool and whatnot, but it was never, like, something I really got super into. Um, I was more of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle guy. Let's see here. The description, when the Decepticons attack the Autobots at their weakest moment, an unlikely new hero joins the battle. With human and Transformer robots live at stake, can Optimus Prime unlock the true power behind the matrix of leadership to save them both? Not too big of a fan of this cover. Uh, let's see here. Maybe I got a better cover. One. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a better cover. That's a cool cover right there. Um... I got a few other covers. Uh, that's pretty, pretty tight. To keep it a buck, this would be the first no for me. I'm not too big on a Transformers like that. And if I was realistically going to the comic book store, I'm probably going to cap myself at 100 bucks. Like, I'm just to, to try to be responsible, you know? <laughs> All right, again, once I hit like 100, I'm like, all right, I'm starting to wild out. Need to need to calm down a little bit with the, you know, got other expenses, you know. Um, right now, though, I would have probably spent about, let's see, your 5, 11, $16 so far. So not bad. I'm still pretty good right now. I'd still be doing some perusing. Uh, next up, we got Green Lantern issue seven. The death of a major Green Lantern character is revealed. After this explosive confrontation with Sinestro, Green Lantern is confronted by the United Planets Lanterns for illegally operating within the quarantine zone. And the mystery of what took place on Karuger is finally revealed. Plus the final, the finale of the origin of Sensen and the lead into the new Sinister Sun series. Um, I was never the hugest Green Lantern guy, you know? I was more Flash, Batman, even Superman, Wonder Woman even. It's like right there with Aquaman for me. Uh, I do like this cover right here though. It's a, it's a tough cover right here. This cover, this, this is a tough ass cover right here. I like that. Um, me personally, I probably wouldn't cop this one, but uh, for people who are a Green Lantern fan, I'd probably cop this cover right here, dog. I encourage you to cop that cover. I mean, the original cover is tough too. Honestly, every cover I'm seeing for the Green Lantern, they, these are all tough, bro. Might might have to reconsider based on what my budget is. Like looking at like at the end, I'll put it on the maybe with the Miles Morales because you know I'm an art sucker at the end of the day. Um, more than anything, the art, the art is number one for me. Um, like I could, I would rather, I would rather, and this is going to sound crazy because you're reading, but I would rather read a book with terrible writing and amazing artwork than read a book with great writing, but shitty artwork, bro. That's just me personally. Um, Next up, we got Batman and Robin issue five. I'm liking the artwork on this cover. It's a dope, it's a dope cover to me. Uh, let's see what the. It seems like every book has variants now. <laughs> All right, Batman and Robin have been separated. Batman works with White Rabbit to track down the new femme fatale su Shush, while his son Damian hunts down the criminal mastermind who is targeting his father. But Damien won't like who he finds. Don't miss out in the shocking ending. Definitely digging the cover, the initial cover. Uh, oh, shit. What is this? 
Yo, that is a fire cover right there, yo. This, yo, this is getting the want right here. This gonna, yeah, uh, that's getting added to the pool. It's Humberto Ramos on the on the cover too. I could just, I feel like it's Humberto Ramos. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but that looks a little bit like Humberto Ramos style a little bit to me. Just from just from that facial expression right there, and, and I don't know, man. It looks like it's pencils. It's fire, regardless who did it. Um, let's see a few of these other ones real quick. That's tough too, man. That's a tough ass cover too, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. That's fire. Those are both tough covers, man. Um, I'll probably go with the the first one, though. The one I thought was Humberto Ramos. They got three real good covers for that one, right there, in my opinion. Um, let's see here. Here, going back, I gotta get to the comic book store asap. I gotta get to the comic book store this week, cause man. Oh, my birthday is coming up soon too, February 7th. So I'm definitely going to make a trip on my birthday and stack up on some some new books, man, because I got some good material. I got some real good material that I'm definitely got an eye on now. Um, so we're about, what, 16, 21 bucks. I'm going to have to drop at the comic book store next time I go for certain. Let's see here. The Avengers issue number nine. And it states, the Avengers battle the Twilight Court for the sake of Kang the Conqueror. The Twilight Court wishes to bring Kang to justice, but the Avengers will have, the Avengers still need the comatose Conqueror. Which side will claim, uh, which side can claim to truly be just? See, I'm getting caught in mouth and it's messing up my reading. My apologies. Not too bad on the cover. Uh, let's see here. We do got some variants. Every book got like three variants. That's, that's kind of crazy. Uh, that's okay too. Still not really like my particular favorite type of style. Par se. Uh... My favorite character turns 50 this year, and I turned 40. That's crazy, man. I'm fucking old now. Uh, man, you know, this is a no for me. I ain't gonna hold you. None of the variants really, like, caught my, my eye. The the synopsis didn't really catch my eye. or uh, Yeah. They ain't catch my eye either, really. That'd be a pass for me. That'd be another pass along with the Transformers. Moving along, let's see here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> we got Star Wars issue 42. The Sith Rising. Luke Skywalker knows his destiny is leading him towards a confrontation with Darth Vader. But Vader is a Dark Lord of the Sith. And Luke is barely even a Jedi. To have any chance at survival, he must find a way to train himself in the battle techniques he will soon face. He must find another Sith. Uh, I'm not too big on the cover. I ain't gonna hold you. They got a few variants right here. None that really catch my eye. This will be another no for me. I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna waste your time going too deep into it. We got $21. We're we're not completely broke yet. We're not completely, we're not broke, but we're, you know, we're not, we're not hurting the pockets too much as of yet. All right. Next, we got the rise of the powers of X issue one. Wolverine looks to be the only notable one here. Let's see here. The fight for Kakoa has been lost. Ten years ago, the mutants returned from their exile to try and reclaim the earth from the forces of the Orcus. They failed. Now within the victorious Orcus with their gauntlet choking the world, Nimrod and Omega Sentinels put their plan within a plan into action. They are to summon their binary god uh, their binary god to consume everything in their ascension. All that stands between them is the X-Men. What can they do? They are the X-Men. They'll find a way. That's their powers. So begins a story beyond time and space with the rise of the powers beyond their petty intelligence. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, space, 
Petty Human Intelligence from the writers Kirian Gillen, who done Immortal X-Men and Uncanny X-Men, and the artist R.B. Silva, who's done work on Powers of X, Captain America, Symbol of Truth, comes half of the story that will bring the Krakoa, the Krakoa, I can't even say it right now, the Krakoa age to its conclusion. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't even talk right now. Uh, let's see here. They look like they got some pretty dope variant. Oh, I can hold you. Being a huge X Men mark and having the whole Powers of X and uh, House of X series, this is definitely a cop for me. And this would definitely be the cover, bro. That cover is hard as a motherfucker, dog. Uh, look like they got some other pretty dope covers but man that gambit cover boy oh my god yeah that gambit covers the one for sure for sure that is tough right there dog salute to the artist who did that that shit goes ham dog that goes ham that might be one of the prettiest covers of the month man i might have to make a new video just for that like the prettiest covers of the month i think i'm gonna make a note of that All right, moving along, and I'll make that a separate video for the next one, but let's see here. We, uh, so, all right, now that was at, that was at $21, probably gonna be at like 26 or 27, 27. I knew they were gonna add a dollar. Fucking cheapskate motherfuckers. Uh, let's see here. Next we got, <laughs> next we got King Spawn 29. Spawn's journey through hell is almost complete. The throne is in his sight, and only one thing stands in his way. Um, they only got one variant cover, and that is a fire variant cover, dog. That variant cover is so fire, dog. Wow. Man, the variant covers, man. Why... <sighs> Why can't these dudes do the whole fucking book, man? Like, why do you guys just do variant covers? Artists who only do variant covers piss me off, bro. That's why comic book, like, the comic industry is really... That's another thing that hurts the comic industry. Like, all the super good artists, they only do fucking covers, dude. they would be a whole lot more interested in hype around books if, like, these super dope-ass artists did the entire books. That's, that's what made that image revolution so heavy. Um, I'm gonna put in the one just because of this cover. Because I ain't gonna lie, I was about to just say no, but this cover is so hard that it's one of those I would put in consideration based on my budget after I get like my like essential wants out of the way, you know. Um, so we're still at twenty. We're at twenty-seven right now. It's Marvel charging six dollars for one book. <laughs> uh, let's see here. This that's the next episode right there. Since I'm going a week back, I got to keep going and doing that at this time. So my apologies for now. Uh, Blade issue number seven. I do like the cover. Never been like the biggest Blade guy, even though those Wesley Snipe movies, one and two at least were fire. But yeah, I digress. All right. So it says Blade teams up with the Hulk to tame the anger within. In preparation to face the Adana once more, Blade must confront the monster he is afraid. He is afraid he is, and who knows better what it's like to live with a monstrous version of yourself than Bruce Banner. Liking that cover right there. That's an okay cover. Thor and uh, Silver Surfer, but two variations of the Wolverine. That's all right, uh, but this would still be a pass for me. Never been the biggest Blade guy. Let's see here. Shocking, right? I'm black and not a big blade guy. You would think the rep. I'm not going to go there. All right. Next up, we got Titans Beast World issue number four. Witness the fall of a Titan with the greatest spines and killers of the DCU at her disposal. Amanda Waller unleashes her malevolent master plan to remake the world in her image with the Titans off the board. Do the beast stand a chance? The wall hunt begins here, and 
Got Peacemaker right there. Got a few variants, none that are really like catching my eye. This little Starfire one looks okay, but yeah, this is a pass for me. Still got 27. We got 27 bucks. We're not doing too bad so far. The sensational She Hulk issue number four. I like that cover right there. That was a nice cover. Make female sexy again in comic books, man. This is nice to both look attractive in it, you know. Um, you got the Wolverine doing the Spider-Man symbiote. Then you got this She-Hulk variant right there. But I, I like the actual cover the best. Let's see here. She-Hulk and Jack of Hearts go on vacation. <clears throat> In space, someone from Jack's past is looking for him. When two heavy hitters like She-Hulk and Jack of Hearts are in serious danger, that's a huge problem. Uh, not the biggest She-Hulk person, but I am a huge artist sucker. So if the artwork inside looks anything like that, based off what my budget is, it'd be on the consideration list, if nothing else. Uh, let's see here, moving along. We have Wesley Dodds, the Sandman issue four. I, yo, I hate when a writer or artist put their their name on the book, especially especially if one of two things: one, it's a Marvel or DC property, because you essentially don't own it, and they're essentially probably already established before you got on the book. So, like. It's it's giving you more more credence than you are giving it. Uh, the second, it's not an independent book that you own and and completely. You know, like it's not your 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 baby, your creation. Um, so it's a little vain to me. It's like a vanity at that point. Um, and that's that's a huge turnoff for me as well. Honestly, just me personally. Um, I got a few variants right there. Not too crazy. Let's see here. The Sandman faces his worst nightmare. Trapped in a dream by his own sleep gas, Wesley Dodd comes face to face with his worst nightmare. Can he escape his own dark dream? And will it be time to stop the fog's next move? All right. I apologize. I am incorrect. I had jumped to conclusions. And I am man enough to admit my wrongdoing. Wesley Dodds is the name of the character in the book. I feel like a complete imbecile now. It does not change the fact that I still would pass on this book not too familiar with Wesley Dodd, the Sandman. Artwork in, like in the middle of it's not really my particular style that I'm drawn towards or whatnot. Uh, next, we have The Sacrificers, issue six by Image Comics. Um, let's see here. There is a point in every life where we must choose between who we want to be and who is, is easiest to become. There are dark places that once trapped within can feel inescapable, but anything is possible with a friend. Join superstar creator Rick Reminder and Max Fiumara as they close out the first chapter in the new hit series. Um, this would be one of those books I would just have to look at at the comic book store and make my decision because I don't I haven't heard much about it or whatnot. And I think that that's one of the things, that's the problem. You don't hear much about a lot of these independent books, and this is Image, but a lot of comic books in general these days, you don't hear a lot of hype or anybody covering what's going on or anything for the most part. You have a... You have, for every one person online that's like speaking positively or what's going on in comic books, you got like 10 people with, with 10 times, if not a hundred times a larger audience that are bashing the industry and saying manga is doing better, which it is. And this is bad, which some things are, you know, and it's just more focused on that. So there's no, you don't know, you don't know what's good. You don't know what to check out or even, you know, that it existed sometimes like this right here. So I think that's, this is a reminder of why this, uh, 
this show is going to be needed moving forward, you know, did, did it smart myself up and also hip others who may be, you know, just out of the loop as of late and whatnot and just re entering back into the comic book scene. I'm not re entering back into the comic book scene. I stay with the comics, but uh, I've definitely took it like a good <laughs> close to a year off of new comics, like outside of like going the comic cons i might have picked up some new comics at comic con recently but other than that it's been like just picking up a lot of the old comic books you know because now that i'm older a lot of those books you couldn't afford as a kid when you get that paycheck you're like man let me get that comic book i've been you know i damn near got the whole todd mcfarland spider-man right now i'm only missing the first three issues uh for four issues um the very first first four issues todd mcfarland did um of course that including venom's debut so that's going to be the most pricey one to get, you know, but yeah, uh, let's see here. Moving along. So, so far I only spent $27, not doing too bad this week at the comic book store. We got daredevil gang war issue. Number two, is this a female daredevil? Like is daredevil as gang war rages on a new player emerges, New York city's criminal element stands poised to tear itself and the entire island to pieces with only Electra standing between them and the citizens of Hell's Kitchen. Fighting against foes first seen in Saladin Ahmed and Aaron Cooter's first explosive chapter of Daredevil, Electra has her hands full to begin with. But a dangerous new player with powerful and lethal abilities and skills to match Electra's own explodes into the fray. Maybe this is Electra under a Daredevil suit. Maybe, I don't know. Um, let's see here. I don't know, because, I mean, I got long hair there, too. I haven't followed Daredevil. I never really got into the Daredevil books, but it's something that I'm... After the Netflix series, oddly enough, <laughs> sad it took the Netflix series. That's one of the rare times it was a reverse, uh, where it's just like, man, I know Frank Miller. Looking at the old Wolverine miniseries, it's like, man, I definitely got to check out Frank Miller's run on Daredevil. This is a pretty cool cover right there, but this is still another one of those books I would have to pass on. Daredevil not really my my main guy like that, you know what I'm saying? Moving along, that's not to say I wouldn't buy a Daredevil book, but that one just ain't doing it for me. Not enough. Not enough incentive. Next up, we got Fish Flies, issue number four. Kind of like this art style. Kind of reminds me of like a... Uh, it reminds me of uh, Frank Miller a little bit right here. It's pretty, pretty cool. Got one little alternate... I don't know. Frances Fox and her new friend attempt to escape their hiding place on her father's farm while Helen du Dupice, or Dupie, uh is visited by her own strange visitor in the hospital. Will Helen find out who shot her son Paul or will she lose even more of her tenuous grip on reality? This artwork gives me a vibe of Eric Larson and, uh, and Frank Miller. Really like that art style. I'll put it on the maybe. Like, no, no for sure, but yeah, that'd probably be something I might, if I had a few dollars left over, might just pick up. Uh, let's see here. Still at $27, so not bad. Not bad for this week. Giant Size Spider-Man Issue 1. Not too big on this type of art style. I think I'll hold you. Uh, let's see here. Spider-Man versus Villainum. I don't know, I said it like that. Spider-Man versus Venom. Dylan Brock, a.k.a. Villain, has a bone or a brain to pick with Miles Morales. With Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Scribe Cody Ziegler teaming up with Eben Coelho, who worked on Venom and Fantastic Four. And with the cover by a legendary Brian Hitch. This is a giant-sized Spidey story that can't be missed. And this is just the first of more exciting giant sized one shot featuring your favorite characters releasing throughout the first half of this year. Plus, <laughs> plus includes a reprinting of Ultimate Comics Spider Man issue 22 by Spidey Legends Brian Michael Bendis and Sarah Pacelli, featuring the epic conclusion of Miles' first battle with Ultimate Venom. 48 pages. Let's see. Not too keen on that 
art style right there. This cover right here looks sick as shit. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of variants by the same dude. You can't just do a book, bro. Really? Or, or better yet, if you can't do a book, could you do like the Marvel Masterpiece card set for like a season or something? Because you got some dope skills, bro, but you're only doing covers. What up with that? Um, it's a tough one, man. That $7 price tag is nasty, too. I ain't gonna hold you. Um, this will go on the maybe right here. Man, all the variants look better than the... All the variants look better than the damn actual cover. Like, why is that a thing? Why do the variants always look better than the the main cover? Like, it's, like, shocking to me when it doesn't. Like, shit. All those are fire variant covers. I'll put in the maybe. It's not, like, a guarantee special with the $7. But, uh... But that's a maybe. Right there. I mean, seven dollars for forty-eight pages ain't bad. I paid thirty-five for for an Isom book, and that was like a hundred pages. So I mean, that's that's it's really not bad at all. Getting a little cheap. I mean, but you know, you gotta support the the the, the independents a little bit more. You know, they're not as uh you know protected as like a corporation like Marvel and whatnot. So I definitely don't have a problem with that. Let's see here, Marvel Comics, Spider Gwen, Smash. Issue number two, is she the Hulk now or Smash? Like, is she getting, is she getting banged? Like, what's going on here? Like, uh, cover is not a bad cover. I, I like the line art and whatnot. I can how the Dazzlers draw more than Spider going on it. Let's see here. Deep Dish and Deep Trouble, next tour stop, Chicago. Gwenpool's double duty as drummer and secret bodyguard for Dazzler as tension threatens to tear both bands apart. Plus Hulk attacks again, but this time he's not alone. What is Earth 65's Bruce Banner really after? Yo, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I like the whole Spider Gwen. She is a drummer, Dazzler. I like that. I like that correlation. I like that team up right there. That's a dope one. This variant looks pretty dope. Yeah, that variant looks dope. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. This variant looks dope, too. That variant looks dope, but, bro, I ain't gonna hold you. That would be the cop right there. And I would definitely pull this because, man, yo, I like the description. I like what I'm reading from the story description. $4.27. We had $31. Huh. I was trying to see how many more of these that we got. Man, there's a lot of books. Uh, let's see here. Captain Marvel, issue number four. Blast her into the negative zone, determined to free both herself and the morally ambiguous Z Yuna from the permanent bond of the nega bands. Captain Marvel brings the fight home to the negative zone. Buried deep within inside this topsy-turvy world is the key to breaking the bond. But nothing in the zone comes free. And when Carol ends up on Blastar's doorstep, the disgraced king gets a perfect shot at revenge. Pretty cool cover right there. Not really tripping off the uh, variants. And this will be a pass for me. I'm not even going to hold you. All right, next up, moving along, we got Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, issue number two. I'm liking this artwork right here. It reminds me of the dude who used to do Deadpool back in the day. Um, let's see here. Beware the lunar tomb of Dracula. Dracula returns. The moon is under attack, and Spider-Man must team up with Moon Knight 2099 to save it. Our celestial web slinger is going to need some new armor to get through it all. Uh, you know, this is the maybe right here. I do like how 
Spider Spider Man 2099 versus Dracula. I like that's a nice little uh it's a nice little t- matchup right there. Both being like vampires and whatnot. Uh let's see here. Moving along the outsiders issue number three. It's a pretty cool cover. Not too bad of covers. Travel deeper into the multiverse than ever before. Dreaming of bats. Only two things are certain about the mysterious door that has appeared in the Outsider's ship. The first, it was opened by the drummer using a set of multiversal multiversal coordinates discovered in a dream. The second, their computers have identified it only as a narrative singularity. For most to step through, such a door would be unthinkable, even insane which makes it a perfect mission for the outsiders. As Kate Kane and Luke Fox venture into the unknown reaches of the multiverse, they fall deeper and deeper into a maze of darkness guided by unfamiliar versions of familiar faces. What is the strange world they discovered? How are they connected to it? And who's lurking in the shadows, ready to, st- ready to destroy it all? Um, you know, not a bad description. I wasn't really too interested, but that description... Not too bad. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna put it on the one though. I mean, I'm probably gonna pass on that one. We're at thirty-one dollars. Trying to be responsible with my money. Let's see here. What else are we gonna add to the pool list? Luke Cage Gang War issue three. All right, for the Luke Cage fans, we got Luke Cage Gang War issue number three. Kind of remind me of Rob Layfield style for some reason. I don't know why it does. Though. Um, oh my God, yo, this cover is so stupid. It's an automatic pull for that cover alone, bro. For that cover alone, it's very rare I'm going to buy a book just because of the cover. That cover, you got a cop. The fight for New York is on. Spider Slayers are back and bigger than ever. Luke Cage, Danny Rand, Jessica Jones, Cloak and Dagger face a giant threat as they face the battle for the soul of New York. You see how great artwork gets me excited like that? But you see the how I read that? Because that artwork is just incredible, dog. Like, beautiful job. Whoever did that, bro. Definitely going to do a top 10 uh Comics cover and like top 10 books most looking forward to uh, single video because I know these are going to run a little long just due to how many new releases coming out uh, each each week. And man, it's crazy how many good books there are that are dropping just last week and no one really talks about because all we constantly talk about is which character got casted to play this role. We're more focused on people are focused on the, the movies than they are the comic books. Um, let's see here. Thunderbolts issue number two. I'm loving how all this Kingpin now. Kingpin is a fire ass villain. So I'm loving to see all this Kingpin love that we get in. Uh, that cover is not too bad. That's okay. I actually like the This is one of the rare times I actually like the main cover better than the, uh, than the variants. So let's see here. The last book was four dollars. So we're at thirty-five bucks. We're at thirty-nine bucks because I'm adding this to the pool list. The Thunderbolt series is a must-buy. I'm telling y'all right now. The new Thunderbolts. I read the description uh, for for issue one that started with the Winter Soldier making his uh, own new team of. Thunderbolts to take down like the top bad guys in Marvel and whatnot, man, just from the synopsis one, it just seems like a really good book. So yeah, it's definitely a pickup for me. So we have $39 now. My pool list, this is the beg seg moment. You guys can uh, donate to the cash app at the bottom of the screen, Fata Mania, dollar sign Fata Mania. All money donated, just leave a note four comics or four pool list and that money will go towards the comics that are being reviewed today 
on this week's edition of uh, the comic books that are coming out. With that being said, we continue on. We got Star Wars The Mandalorian Season 2, Issue Number 8. I wasn't even aware this is a thing. The rescue, the Mandalorian and his allies attempt a daring rescue. Meoff Gideon unleashes the dark troopers while the fate of Grogu hangs in the balance, guest starring an unexpected Jedi. This is a skip for me. I've already seen the Mandalorian seasons. I love the Mandalorian seasons. There's no need to regurgitate it. That's what I'm picking up. I feel like it's just going to be like, the same thing just put into a comic book and um I'm, I'm more for if it's the other way around we take something from the comic book and then pin to animation and movie not the other way around um let's see here so we're at 39 dollars still speed force issue number three i'm like in the middle with this artwork like it a little bit like it don't like it a little bit i don't know it's kind of weird hate love thing with that art style Let's see here. I like the original art style better for some reason. I don't know what it is, but I like the other one better. Reading the description, Speed Force issue three, guest starring Mr. Terrific. Terrific. After the chaos at Star Labs last issue, a member of the gang has been possessed. But while the youngsters are entangled with one another, Mr. Terrific comes over from investigating the spooky Speed Force stuff happening in the pages of the flash to give our heroes a hand this is going to be a no for me let's see here moving along still at 39 dollars so not bad do, 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 do. come on load up page mm -mm -mm. fables issue 161 In this uh, penultimate issue with the lives of the inhabitants of the Black Forest on the line, Peter Pan and Herney enter a bloody battle that will bring both to their knees. But when Tinkerbell comes to the aid of her beaten ball, she'll unleash an unimaginable fury, and there is no telling who will live and who will die. another one of those times where I actually like the initial cover better than the original and I'm not gonna hold you I'm not too not too familiar with fables but from that description it caught my interest um so I'll put it on the maybe list that'd be high on the maybe list right there I ain't even gonna hold you because man Peter Pan Tinkerbell but like a dark little twist on it I'm all for it let's see here Get off my screen. Okay. The Swan Songs poems about endings by W. Maxwell Prince with illustrations by Martin Marazzo. I remember a book similar to this as a kid. The end of the end of the series about endings. Here the team behind Ice Cream Man creates something only they could. A dark, morose take on a beloved book of children's poems. It's an Ice Cream Man crossover. A parodic play with the near-perfect rhyme scheme. The terminal issue of a bunch of terminal issues. So the end is here. We hope you enjoy our swan song. Uh, it's going to be a no for me. Even though I did like the uh, original book. I don't, I can't remember if it's called The Swan Song, but I remember the book with that, with a, with a little cliff right there and shit. Let's see here. The Sentry issue number two. Is the Sentry a girl now? I can't tell from this. Oh, no. That is Baxter. Okay. That was, that was a pretty cool book cover. I ain't going to hold you. Not too bad. About too crazy 
Is it, whoa, hold up. Is the sentry a girl now? Is that the reveal? Sentry's a girl? <laughs> no. No, that's not. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. As more people begin manifesting Sentry's powers, it's almighty... It's Almighty Knight and Jessica Jones can do to keep track of the incidents, let alone discover any connections between them. <laughs> Meanwhile, each new sentry must reckon with their newfound abilities and what this new powerful this newfound power means to who they will become. Unfortunately, one of them isn't a team player. So you're gonna take something that makes a character special and just like give it to a bunch of people makes Sentry no longer special, so I don't, I'm not really liking that. Nah. I don't like that. Um, not to be negative, but yeah, I don't, yeah. Um, let's see here. So that's another pass. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Saturday Morning Adventures, issue number nine. I love this cover. That is a dope-ass cover right there. Reminds me of it reminds me of uh, Sean Galloway. I'm not certain if he did. Uh, no, he didn't. Okay, dope cover. Gives me that Sean Galloway vibe right there. These are all decent, but yeah, I like the original cover the best. So good job to them. Oh, I didn't get to read the. Uh, I didn't get to read the description. All right, so let's see here. Shredder and Crank. Uh, Shredder and Crank have finally succeeded in forging a blade capable of cutting through time and space. Call to action to stop Shredder from committing more continuum crimes. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles encounter enemies and allies, old and new or maybe new and old, as the timeline is threatened. Don't miss this first issue of Saturday Morning's Adventures, the Idiku Trilogy. This will be another maybe for me. Because uh, while I love the cartoon, when it came to the comics, I liked the older comics that were a little bit more dark and uh, realistic. You know, Even though I do love that art style, so I put it in the maybe. Maybe, maybe not, you know. Next up, we got Kea issue 14. <laughs> Looks like we're starting to dive into like the, uh, you know, more so independent stuff right here. And with these, it all it typically comes down to artwork for me. I can hold you. Kea with no time to lose, Kea and Jen are back. Or <laughs> Kea and Jen are tracking down a princess who can get them passage onto a ship bound for safety. But can they find her and not get captured in an occupied city overrun by soldiers of the robot empire? Uh, this one for me is probably going to be a no. Not really typically my style. And uh, let's see here. Next up, we got Crave. You know, this, this is going a little long, so I'm... I'm I'm just going to brush through these real quick. You also got Blood Commandment issue number three, Deep Cuts number four, Earth Divers issue 14, Usagi Yojimbo, Patrol Head, Adventure Man. Ghost Lights issue one. Let's take a look at that one. That one, that one piqued my interest with the artwork. See, that's 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 what I'd do if I was at somewhere and I, I was at the comic book store and I'm not familiar. I, I look at that cover and if that cover draws my eyes, I'll pick up the book and look at a few pages and see if it's worth giving a shot. Let's see here. When the good guys of the Golden Age come back, all their ghosts follow. Now Claire, the new adventure man, and her maybe her baby Bew. Chris, the new cross draw. I know I said that wrong, so my apologies. Baby Bayou, Chris, the new draw cross draw kid, defend peace on earth 
from a phantom empire of crime. Damn, I can't read right now. By Matt Fra Fraction, sex criminals and Hawkeye, and Terry Rachel Dodson, who's worked on Red One and Harley Quinn. It's another one of those maybes, but that is a damn good cover, so it definitely caught my eye. So good job with that. Uh, let's see here. We got Antarctica issue seven, the madness number six, per, per evil issue number four. She's on her knees. I'm, like, no, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> unnatural issue number two, Zorro, man of the dead issue number one. I don't know. Masterpiece issue number two. It's got my eye. Emma is a brilliant young woman whose life just turned upside down by a billionaire who says that her long lost parents were in fact very famous thieves. They took the world's most famous billionaire for a queen before they disappeared, never to be seen or heard from again. And now he wants revenge from her. Follow Emma as she enters into the world her parents left behind and come face to face with the Paragon. All this brought to life by the the amazing brush of Alex Maliv. <laughs> hmm. Sounds a little interesting, but I'm going to skip. Only $39 so far this week. I'm doing pretty damn good. Not burning a hole in my pocket. Uh, let's see here. I'm skipping. Oh, I'm skipping most of these now. Star Trek: Strange New World, The Scorpius Run. Never been a Star Trek guy. I'm not even going to bother that. Blood Rick issue number two. I'm liking this. I'm liking that art. It's definitely caught my eye just from this artwork right here. And wow, what do you know? Just one cover, I guess. Okay. Uh, across the frozen plain, the wounded and furious Bloodrick charges after the bear that attacked him. He loses blood, his mind, and any sense of direction as the beast disappears into the blowing snow. Desperate and delirious, he searches for a glimmer of hope as he drags him himself across the wasteland. This is a pool for sure. We are at $43 now. Uh Never heard of this book, but I definitely would give that a shot. That looks fucking bad. bad I also ain't gonna hold you. Uh, moving along, where are we at? Cruella DeVille got her own book. That's hilarious. Firefly, The Fall Guys. Oh no. Exo Man of War. Rebel Moon, are you are you kidding me? Quick stops, cash. <laughs> Yo, that's hilarious. No, uh, let's see here. Midlife, or how, or how to hero at filthy. Uh, artwork's a little works a little uh, interesting, but. I'm so Star Signs, Looney Tunes, Dark Spaces, the Hollywood Special Issue Number Five, Tear Us Apart, Subgenre. Yeah, that looks a little interesting right there. I would pick this up real quick and see what it's about. From the New York Times best selling creators of Bang comes a mind bending multi dimensional murder mystery presenting in a pulp magazine sized format. Our hero realizes he's been jumped through dimensions. He's been jumping through dimensions between the ancient world of sword and sorcery to the high-tech cyberpunk dystopia. He is, he is determined to discover his original world, his one true birthplace in reality. I don't know. I'm a little on the fence, man. That the, the the first cover actually had me a little interested. This will be when I would look at the artwork inside and make a determination. But the story looks pretty good, so you know you might want to check that out, you guys. Let's see here. 
it's my first episode, so I didn't know how long these would take. So now I'm learning next next episode. I'm probably not going to be able to review every single last book and description because, damn, there's a lot. But, you know, just the ones that catch my eye, I guess, going forward to try to, you know, think we're close. To, yeah, we're getting closer to the end now. Guma, the beginning of her, issue number two, not really my style. Alice Cooper, same thing, not really my style. Abbott, 1979. Not too bad. I have a little, what do you call it? Jennifer Blood, Battle Diary. Hey, sexy woman. Let's go ahead and check it out. <laughs> The one, the one woman death squad known as Jennifer Blood so woo, has emerged from a, animity once more, and she's taken on a whole new generation of criminal scum, poising as a hired assassin. Blood has rescued a woman marked for death by the Volk white supremacy gang, but now that they are both in the Volk's iron crosshairs, their only hope may be able to pit the vicious gang against their equally rehab, reprehensible rivals and make sure that they don't get caught in the middle outlaw author fred van linty from marvel zombies and renegade illustrator robert care robert carey the outsiders conspire with recidivized cover artist joseph michael lensner i'm saying that probably terribly wrong lensner leslie lyrics lee <laughs> And Rebecca Pabla to bring you Jennifer Blood issue two. The story's so good, it's got to be illegal. Um, so that's the artist. And that's the writer. And it's a white girl taking on the KKK. Sometimes I wonder with these things, man, when you, like, you know, throw the KKK in your book or the white supremacy. Are you really just trying to, like, you know, sub to that, you know? I'm going to put some, you know, white propaganda in my books, but I'll justify by having it beat up type thing, you know? Uh, whatever. Let's see here. Do, do, do. It reminds me when I was uh, in an art college, I was at the Art Institute. I graduated, by the way, but there's a, there's a dude who did not, by the way. <laughs> Who uh, he was a little skinhead dude, and I remember it was like a comic book club, and we both ended up joining because you know neither one of us ran it, so we couldn't gatekeep who joined it or whatnot. But there was a skinhead dude, and he was working on a book, and he had like a bunch of like the swastikas and shit like that. And like I was like, "Yo, bro, you, you like you racist, bro? You got a problem or some shit?" And dude, just like, "Oh no, I'm not racist and everything." Like I, they tried to recruit me, but I didn't join. Shit, I'm like, motherfucker, like I know, I know you are, dog. And it's your little way of sneaking your little bullshit into the book. But when confronted, you're a pussy and ain't, you know, and I, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a smaller, I'm not a badass by any means, but you know, when confronted these cowards, you know, they'll, they'll never just tell you what they really, you know, what's really on they, they mind, you know, uh, let's see here. Next up, we got assassin's apprentice two issue. Number two, you got haunted house, a love story. <laughs> It's funny, I had another story at the Art Institute. This dude, like, invited me to his house to uh, fix my laptop that crashed. And dude fixed my laptop for free. But when I was at his house and he's working on it, at one point, like, he was showing me some shit, like, throughout his house. And we're in his room, and uh, he forgot, like, his closet was, like, cracked a little bit open or whatnot. And so uh, when he left, like, I looked and saw the crack and notes. There was, like, a little, like, pitch of fucking... <laughs> of hitler and everything i'm like oh this dude's like apparently racist at least of jews i guess from uh, if you have a picture of hitler i'm gonna take it you're fucking racist you know uh, at least towards jews and i'm like oh this motherfucker's fixing my computer for free so i'm not gonna say shit about it <laughs> but that was the last time i went to the dude's house so i digress anyway uh acid chimp versus business dog <laughs> no uh gretel you know, if those boobs were just a little bit bigger, I might have at least picked it up and gave it a... Being honest with y'all. Let's see here. Distember. Chased. I don't know. Not really into that art. Cover, no. Tales of the Bazaar. The art's turning me off on that one. Tox. The art's turning me... It's turning me off. 
Oh, said, hey, let me. Oh, this art is sexy. I like those skulls, bro. I like the, I like the feet. I like how he drew the feet, man. Like, yo, this whole art is fire, bro. This art is fire, yo. Even the even the variants fire too, bro. Yo, this will be one of those ones. I might have to cop two two covers. Now a prisoner, Claire's only hope for salvation turns into a nightmare and an issue full of grinding steel, broken bone, and bloody flesh. Yo, sign me up. Sign me up. This is one of those ones I would have to cop. I would have to cop two covers at the very least, bro. Yeah, I, I'm copping cover C and cover A, bro. That shit is hard. Now I'm only copping one. I'm a cheapskate. We got uh, 41. We have $46 now. $46 thanks to Tox, a comic book I never heard of. But due to the art, I am extremely interested in now. That's that's the beauty of art, bro. The art draws you in. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I'm more forgiving of a crappy writing than I am crappy art. Because I am a huge, I am the biggest critic of my own art, which is why like I'm I'm gonna be critical of other people, but nowhere near as critical as I am of myself. Uh, I am my worst enemy when it comes to my art. Uh, world of Archie Jumbo Comics. I mean, J Archie Classic, but no, not my my style. But I do respect it. White River Monsters. Uh, not the biggest monster dude. Steamboat, really? No. The Von Erics, I would have to see more of this. Because, man, I am a big wrestling nerd. Let's see here. Issue 24, guest edited by the Iron Claw filmmaker Sean Durkin. The Von Erics are more than just the world's most legendary pro wrestling dynasty. They were also a family. And this distilled version of a family photo album, readers will get a snapshot of the Von Erics life. Inside and outside the ring via a mix of newspaper and magazine clippings and mostly important, most importantly, personal family photos and ephemera. I'm not sure if I said that right. I never heard that word, but I love learning new words, man. That was one of the things as a kid growing up at comic book, there'd be like a lot of words I would use that I learned from comic books that a lot of kids my age never used or heard of and make me appear smarter than what I was to them. Uh, or made me appear smart to kids that were smarter than me so that they didn't just deem me a dumbass. But let's see here. Uh, just due to the Von Erichs, love the Von Erich family, love wrestling and wrestling lore. Um, I'm actually working on a comic book that is, the genre is based on wrestling. Spoiler alert. So, uh, so this would definitely be a pickup for me, even though it's not your traditional comic book. That was six dollars. We were at forty one, so we're at forty seven dollars now. Um, pretty close to the end of January tenth's pool list. So let's see here. Yeah, there's only a few left, and don't look like there's gonna be anything else. I'm probably gonna spend money on. Let's see here. The Valley of Death, the accursed issue number two. Shitty stories issue number one. That I, I put that on a maybe. Um, spread love comics 22. Bino issue 4218. Black Hops issue number six. I don't know, man. Black Hops. I, I, now that one drags that, that's caught my interest. What is Black Hops? Oh, it's like a shonen jump. I'm thinking for yes. It's a shonen jump for this was something I was thinking of of doing my damn self. So to see someone else has already got it going, that's dope. I'm not even mad at it. I mean, I got my hands full just trying to do my comic book, but if my comic were ever reached success, I would definitely like to do something to open the door to give more 
more accessibility and eyes to other independent creators. But this is definitely, there's no price tag on it. But that is something I would 100% support without a doubt as soon as I, as soon as I would see anything on that. That is dope. Antarctic Press, shout out to them. Shout out to Fred Perry. Got every Fred Perry Gold Digger issue except for the very last issue because I thought 150 was going to be the last issue, but, uh, or not 150, 300, but he did 301 to break the record uh, for most comic books by one creator in America. Chaos Twins. No, for, no, no. When I see stuff like this, it makes me say, man, do your fucking comic book and stop bullshitting. I would never allow my comic book to come out looking like this. But man, I mean, someone's making money from because they're content. Like, I don't care. Here it is. Like, I can't draw a lot of shit good. The only thing I could draw decent is, is, is human beings. Some beast and animals and whatnot. But dude, if I was just content with just putting out the first thing, this will be it right here, bro. And I ain't trying to be negative, but that right there. That, 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 uh. Uh, let's see here. Gasan issue 176. I'm not quite certain what Gasan is. There's no description, but I got you know, that artwork right there is fucking badass. So if I saw that, more than likely, it looks like it appears to be like another alternative to Shonen Jump. That would definitely be something I would take a look into. Uh, you guys, so with that being said, that is all the comic books that have come out January 10th of 2024. Make sure to go to your local comic book stores. Support your local comic book stores. Let's make comic books great again, you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the first episode of This Week in Comic Books. I am your host, Andre Harris. Until next time, you guys, stay classy. We up out of here. Peace. Yeah, yeah, hey, this sounds like the ended theme, don't it, like, like an anime going off, the ended theme to the I shouldn't be alive anime, yo, way too much on the mental, get the brain of a schizo, got my heartbeat changing the tempo, crime royal, I take it, it sip slow, gotta go one, hold on like it's in bulk, I just wanna make it official, man, I'm good enough for anyone that ever tried to get me, yo, so if you're really with me and you're really not against me, I don't want you to get hit up, I'll show you what's